Our God is on His throne ruling the affairs of men. God does not change. His truths have not changed. He's promised a witness in the church according to the election of grace in all ages that will stand for the old paths, defending His truth. The Primitive Baptist Digital Library is pleased to present the Word of Sovereign Grace. Timely video messages based on the King James Bible and the doctrines taught by Christ and the Apostles. We appreciate all that's gone before us, all that we've heard. We've seen faces we haven't seen for a long time. We've seen faces that we recognize that we can't put names to. But I was sitting here listening to the preaching and at the same time trying to pray uh, that God would deliver all of us this evening. I, as I looked down, I began to think about what a wonderful blessing it is that someone, somewhere, had the thought and the idea to begin this. We had a little fellowship meeting back at home that's uh, uh, now going into its fifth year. It's been wonderfully blessed. And as we look out and we see all these elders and we saw all these folks stand from all these different states, it makes us think about how the Lord has drawn power and the love that is manifested to his children. Might be in Texas, might be in Ohio, might be in Virginia, wherever. But I'm glad that when the Lord works with his children, he works with them all the same way. He gives them a love that they know one another and they recognize one another. By this, they know that they pass from death into life. life. As we looked out and we saw this congregation and we, we were looking and trying to pray, we saw this great chandelier hanging there. And we began to just kind of look at it in awe for a few moments. And you know, if we don't say anything else this evening while that we're here, uh, we'd like to say that I believe with all my heart there's a day coming in which there'll be a fellowship meeting like there ain't never been before. And Lord, it never will need to be again because it won't break up. And there'll be a light there that will make this chandelier look like nothing. And you know, it's so glorious hanging there. The light that we got yet one of these days, by God's grace, so be that we're one of His. We'll see a light. That's so bright that as long as we live in this world, these eyes can't behold. But oh, what we can see when we look through that glass dark. It be glorious. It be glorious in all this apparel. We'd like to uh, quote maybe a couple of verses of scripture to you this evening and try to be very expedient of Elder Mozingo's time. And, and we realize that it takes God's grace to, to bless us as well as He. Will you pray for, please, pray for me and pray for Him. Pray for yourself. We would like to read just a, maybe once one verse of scripture or, or two from the about the 75th, 75th chapter of the book of Isaiah. It seems like it's been on our minds somewhat today, and it branches off. Maybe some of these other elders have been in that position where they'll see a scripture, and it might branch off in two directions, describing two different types of people. And uh, so with that, we'll, we'll read what this one is saying here. Uh, he said, uh, speaking of some folks, he said, which say? Stand by thyself. Come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. These are a smoke in my nose, a fire that burneth all day. And it seems like that has been somewhat on our mind, and so with God be blessed, we're going to speak about that for a little while and get out of the way. But I, I've wondered as we go along today, the numerous of times, the numerous times that I have seen someone that I would describe that might fit that. One that would say, don't, don't come around me, I'm, I'm better than you are. And I began to try in my mind to remember back to those times. And the first thing that came to my mind was when I was a young boy in school. Because you always have the one that might be more aggressive than all the others. And he'll safeguard himself, maybe a she, if it's with the sisters, but the young girls at that time. But there'll be the one that will always feel seemingly better than someone else. And so I began then tracing that up with my thoughts and in my mind, I traced it right up to myself. And then I didn't like it. Because I traced it up to where that there was a point in my life that I realized that I fit that mold. And then mercy came my way. Now there's the brain, not there. So, as we stand before you then, we'd like to talk about some, some things that lies before us here as long as we live in the world. 
And we come up against them very often. And this is one of them. And someone that would fit this pattern, I, I guess Webster would define them as being sanctimonious. Now another word that's very close to that is sanctify. Uh, but yet, a sanctify is something that's been separated uh, for the intent to be holy. Sanctimonious is one that is pretending with no honesty involved to try. He's trying to show himself to be holy when there's none there. And I feel like that a few times that when we, if we were left on our own, and I'd like to say this before I go any farther, that tonight if we're not sanctimonious, don't take credit for it, but say amen and give praise to God. Because he's the one that gave you the heart and the ability to be humble and not be exalted enough that you can look at your brother and your sister and say that you love them enough that you're willing to put them before yourself. If you're not willing to do that tonight, and I, chief above all, I hope I would take my own advice. And I would hope that I would look to God for all of my instructions. And I would hope that I would be willing to walk with his children to the ends of the earth. I would hope that I would stand for these truths no matter who it offended. I would hope that we would stand for those things, that 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 which has been delivered once unto the saints. I would hope that we would stand on it and hold it dear to our hearts. I know one thing that would be, if that wasn't in my life today, if I didn't have the the Lord's children and His truth and the knowledge of it by His grace, I wouldn't have anything in this life. There was a time that uh, in my life I thought all I wanted to do, my goal was to be a millionaire. That was my goal, and I set out at it. Uh, and everything I had, I put at it. That was what I wanted to do. And when we were about 25 years old, we were uh, making some progress. But I'll tell you, when we got to be about 28 or 29, we had let our calling go by the side in that we was paying more attention to that which we wanted to do than that which God had for us to do. And I'll tell you, it wasn't too long that we started seeing those things that we had worked so hard for going away and going away. And my eyes was open, and I was able to see myself then as being one that was sanctimonious. One that was pretending uh, to do those things in which that God had set out for me to do. Trying to fool even my very self. Uh, you know, we will do that sometimes. And we'll try to fool our brethren. Let's give you an example one time of what happened back in, uh, with some of the Lord's children. There was a time in which that, uh, when one of the Lord's brethren uh, had 12 sons. Uh, and there was a time in which that they became jealous of one of them whose name was Joseph. Uh, uh, and you know uh, all about that without us going into all the scripture. Uh, but for times sake, we will try to skim through some of it uh, and show you a few things this evening. Um, but as then, uh, here Joseph was so blessed of God uh, to have these dreams, to have this understanding, and to know what was going to take place uh, uh, down the road and how that God was going to bless him. Uh, and you know, as he began then to tell his brothers what good things that God had done for him, uh, what he's doing, just exactly what God commands a little later on. Go home, tell your friends what good things the Lord has done for you. He had done this, uh, and there was jealousy came into the ranks. Right away, they didn't want to accept what God had in mind, and they wanted that which was of their own. They wanted to do their own plans and go their own way. Now, how many times have you seen a little brother or an old brother come amongst the primitive Baptist uh, where he'd have his own way uh, or his own plan? Uh, uh, rather than not want to go God's way, but he'd have his own way. Uh, you see what take place uh, every time there'd be confusion, uh, uh, wouldn't they? Uh, uh, and you see uh, a mirror, uh, what they've done, this little brother, uh, uh, when they took Joseph uh, just for doing and saying and telling the truth. He told how God had blessed him. Uh, and his, his desire and his heart was full of love. Please pray for us. We'll sit down shortly. Um, but as uh, he went then, uh, and as he went out to where his brethren were at, uh, oh, how many times has there been a little one that has wanted to go where the brethren was at? Uh, uh, my, my heart's desire, my calling uh, uh, in the ministry, other than pastoring my home church, uh, uh, is to work as an evangelist, uh, uh, to work for peace. Uh, uh, my Lord showed me that, and I'll work for it uh, uh, every time I get a chance. Uh, and we was able, uh, by grace, uh, uh, in the last uh, uh, four years, we reunited uh, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 churches uh, uh, in different ways uh, uh, in the north that had not fellowshiped uh, uh, one another uh, uh, for a, long, uh, for a long time, uh, a child of God. Uh, and we've seen men uh, in the north uh, come and visit. You'll see what I mean. Uh, I'll come anytime. You're welcome. Uh, but here, uh, when God blesses a little brother, uh, they'll go out and do what he says to do. Uh, I'll tell you, there'll be peace in the valley. Uh, uh, there'll be a song in every heart. And there'll be joy on the mouth of every lip. This little brother, when he uh, went down there, he so much, I think, is, is more ways than anyone else will read up. Uh, typifies our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But brethren, in the same way, if you'll read it, you can see how he typifies you and I. And you can see how that uh, those that we love would spitefully use us. Isn't that what the Lord said? And they did him. They spitefully used him. They took him. 
of their natural flesh. I throwed him in a pit there. I would for him to have died. I ended up selling him to a band of Ishmaelites. And that was come up by the way. Uh, and their intention was that he would never be seen or hear from again. Uh, you see how men sometimes intend things. Uh, but we read a little further down the road. Uh, where the same brothers said, ye intended it for evil. Uh, but God intended it for good. Uh, now let's see if we can get some of that that's in between there. Uh, uh, here they went. Uh, well, they went right back to their father. Uh, and showed them this uh, a beautiful coat that Joseph had. Uh, I have been given by his father, uh, and that had been stained with the blood uh, of the little lamb there. Uh, and they said, look here, man. Uh, uh, here's the coat. Uh, is this his or not? Uh, uh, surely he'd see the blood, wouldn't he? Uh, and he jumped to a conclusion, uh, and he believed a lie uh, uh, right away in his heart. Uh, uh, he said he'd go to his grave in sorrow. A uh, uh, child of God, we want to tell God's children the truth. Uh, we don't want you to go to the grave in sorrow. Uh, we want you to know there's a king reigning tonight, uh, and that he's sitting at the right hand of God, uh, uh, making intercession for the saints, uh, and that he died for you in heaven's your home, uh, and no man can rob you from that. Uh, uh, it's yours. Uh, uh, the king paid for it uh, uh, with the very best he had. He gave his blood. He gave his life. And heaven's your home because of what Jesus done for you. And someday we'll see that light by his grace. And someday we'll uh, see as brother, the old brother Otis has already told us, we'll be given the holy face of the one who saves by his grace. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll understand it all then, brother, because we'll know as we're known. Uh, we don't understand it all a while that we're here. Uh, but as Joseph then went on down uh, there into the land of Egypt a little later on, his brethren was brought to their knees, brother, uh, there. Uh, how many times uh, have you ever been brought to your knees uh, uh, at another brother uh, asking him to forgive you? Uh, uh, if you have a good chance, it is uh, probably you missed somebody along the way uh, uh, because we all sin and come short uh, of the glory of God. Uh, but we have an advocate. I'm glad to tell you this evening with the Father, uh, and his name is Jesus Christ. Uh, and then we, uh, uh, for, uh, we want this dear brother to have plenty of time this evening. Uh, uh, but here uh, uh, we understand then that we can see that those that say, uh, I'm better than you are. Uh, I'm holier than you. I keep God's laws. Who does that look like, brother? I believe somebody could probably quote me on the 18th chapter of Luke, couldn't they? Yes, they would. And they'd see that little old Pharisee who went up there and told how he'd done all these things for God. How did he fast twice weekly and done all these things? And he was saying, yeah, look at me, God. Now you're indebted to me. I've done all this and now you owe me. But brother, there's a little brother, a little public that come in the door. Well, they don't up to God, uh, uh, hung his eyes toward the ground, uh, and spoke himself on the breast, uh, and said, Bless me, a sinner. Now, there's a difference in one that's sanctimonious and one that's sanctified to be holy and is practicing. Brethren, when you're sanctified, well, I'm glad to say this that by one offering, God hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Perfected forever. Uh, so then we see that they're perfected, uh, brethren, and at the time and at the hour and the day, we're waiting on it. Uh, and when it comes, uh, uh, we wait for the adoption, to win the redemption of these air purchase bodies. Don't you see that? Uh, yes, there's going to be a day. But the Lord told us how that the Lord is going to come back. And he's coming back. Uh, uh, don't you doubt it. Uh, uh, the same one that came down uh, and went back, he's coming back again. Not to step on the earth, uh, uh, but he's going to come speak to us from the air uh, and out of the graves. Uh, uh, because you know who he's coming back with? Uh, you know who those 10,000 saints that he's going to have with him? Uh, you know who they are. Uh, let me tell you who it's going to be. Uh, uh, if I can include myself, then I can say us, uh, uh, but he'll be you. Uh, and the spirits uh, uh, that have gone on to be with the Lord uh, uh, in the last hour, uh, uh, them that are alive and remain uh, uh, will be changed. Uh, and in the moment and caught up in the twinkling of an hour, uh, uh, but brethren, those spirits that went on, uh, uh, Job has already been quoted. Uh, he realized that though the skin worms would devour that body, uh, yet it was coming out of the grave. Uh, uh, you see, we wait the adoption to wit the redemption of these earth purchased bodies. So that's when it's going to take place. When that spirit comes back to that body, there's going to be an adoption that takes place in the room, and we're going to be able to witness it. We're going to be able to see the Lamb of God and rejoice, and we're just going to see him then as he is. So we see them being separated to do those things that God has told us to do. We can see that it's very easy, very easy to, to not uh, do as we've been told. We, we're going to quote uh, just a little bit more first and get out of the way. I don't know what time I got up here, really. But uh, the Lord, it seems like that there's people everywhere all the time trying to conform God's word to get their case. Now, the Lord's children, if they'll just read it and take it for what it says, it'll fit their case. If they'll realize that they are sinners and 
that they are sinners saved by the grace of God, they can read this scripture and take joy with him. And now, brethren, if they feel like that Jesus didn't finish the work, as he said that he did, then as they read this scripture, they're going to find themselves to be condemned uh, and because that he will condemn them if they can't see that. You have to see that you were redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And here's some brethren at one time that again was trying to interfere with God's plan. Uh, let's go back to a time in which that when the Philistines had uh, captured the ark uh, and they had it down in a certain place. And uh, here afflictions and pestilence become, began to come upon them. And they began to grieve. And they had taken this ark down there and they set it in the, a place there where their false god was at and he fell over uh, in the morning when they went out. Uh, they set him up again and they went out again the next morning. He fell over again. And thanks be unto God, his hands were broke and he was broken up. Uh, and uh, uh, there's a, a wonderful story in that. Uh, but we'll go on to what we want to show. Uh, but you see, God had already made a statement some time ago that there was not anyone to handle that ark or to touch that ark unless they were a Levite priest. And brother, what God says stands fast forever. It's sure and no man will change it. Uh, and so then here was this ark uh, and they had had it captured down there and had it in a certain place. Uh, uh, and they began to uh, feel sore because of all these oppression that they were feeling. And they know who were sending it on them, brethren, uh, but they didn't want to admit it. Uh, and so they said, well, let's go ahead and see if we can uh, do like Joseph's brethren did. Let's stack the Heck, uh, so they went out and they said, uh, send us some sorcerers, uh, send us some people to give us some guidance. Uh, and they went in there and they advised them, uh, oh, this is what you need to do. Uh, you need to take an, old, uh, an ox cart, a new ox cart. Uh, uh, and you need to take uh, a two young kind that's never been uh, uh, under the... Uh, under the uh, uh, Yoke, thank you, brother. Uh, that's never been under the yoke. Uh, and then you take five gold mines uh, and five emeralds, uh, and it goes on with some other things that they were to do. Uh, and he says, then you take those and put them on the uh, on the cart with the ark, uh, and then you let the ark go. Uh, and if it goes down its own coast, uh, then we'll know that this is of the Lord. Uh, but if it doesn't, uh, uh, in my own words, then we'll just keep the gold. Uh, uh, we'll keep the ark and everything else. Uh, and they said, now here's what the, uh, I love so much about. I see this in the world every day, uh, and you do too. They said. Uh, Take those uh, uh, young cats uh, uh, there of uh, those uh, kind that's never been hitched to the yoke uh, and high and took the emerald uh, and put them in the barn. Uh, uh, now, child of God, I raised up on the farm. Uh, and two things I learned. Uh, uh, one of them was you don't tie two animals uh, in the same yoke unless they've been trained to work together uh, because they'll hurt one another. Uh, you don't work two horses uh, that's not trained to work in a team. Uh, uh, they're going to hurt one another. Uh, and they're probably not going to pull very straight. Uh, um, the other thing you're not going to do, uh, uh, you don't want to take uh, uh, any animal uh, uh, and take their young baby from them uh, and place it in a stall uh, and where it can hear it bawling and then try to get it to go somewhere. Uh, and, but you see what they were doing? Uh, they were stacking the deck. Uh, they wanted to hold on to the ark. Uh, they wanted things their way. Uh, but here's how God works. Uh, when he said, I work uh, my pleasure. Uh, uh, brethren, uh, uh, in the army uh, of heaven and the matter in the inhabitants of the earth. Uh, uh, so uh, they let him go. Uh, they let the cow go. Uh, look what they done. Uh, right straight down the coast. Uh, uh, they never dreamed they'd do that. Uh, they never dreamed they'd go down there uh, uh, where that band of Israelites was. Uh, uh, they thought uh, uh, they were going to get to keep these things. Uh, and many men today, they think, uh, uh, because I can turn this around uh, uh, to fit my case, uh, it'll be all right. Uh, and it won't be. Uh, I want you to know, uh, and I'm glad to say, uh, uh, that look how God works when he works. Uh, he looked uh, on those Israelites uh, uh, out in the field in the evening working. Uh, uh, friend, it, uh, put yourself in their shoes. Uh, and the ark had been gone. Uh, uh, they'd been blessed by the presence of it uh, when it was there, and they was blessed uh, uh, to see that when it was gone, that they wanted it back. Uh, and in the evening, uh, while they're out in the field working, uh, lo and behold, uh, uh, they look and coming down the road. Uh, uh, here is two young cattle uh, uh, and a new ox cart, uh, and the ark's on it uh, uh, with some gold on it. And they take those very things, those very things that they were going to try to use, contrary to God's purpose. And the Israelites did. They took the ox cart, cut it up in pieces, then killed the two kind, put them up on a rock that was there in that place, uh, and then offered them as a sacrifice, a sweet smelling sacrifice unto the Lord. You see how when you use it according to God's purpose, they used the same thing that they tried to use for their welfare, but they couldn't use it. It didn't work. But when you take over here, these Israelites that used this according to the law of God, it fit and it worked, and they ended up being happy and rejoicing for it. So then we would say this. We'll go. We'll read. Realizing that uh, that we don't want to have that holier than now attitude, we've rushed ourselves.
and then, yeah, we hope you've got one word, something out of it. If so, which word might draft will have. And, uh, but in the first Peter, it's a, a, a verse here that I think is very appropriate to read for, for this time. In the commandment to the Lord's children, he says, But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. That's 15th verse of the first chapter. He says, Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. So you notice what it says there? But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy. So we have a couple of verses that uh, will come to our mind. In uh, 2 Timothy, I believe it says, For who saved us and called us? There's a calling. Who saved us and called us? What kind of calling? Holy calling. Not according to our works. Not according to what we've done. But according to the great purpose of God. Given when? Last month? Last year? No. Before the foundation of the world. Before the world was. Uh, another one. In Ephesians, I believe it says, uh, Speaking of the Lord who blessed us in heavenly places. According. Because of. According as he has chosen us. In him, that we should be holy. Right? As before, as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Scriptures also teach us that we're held up as priests into a holy temple. If we would pray to God daily, search our hearts, be forgiven. And this I try to preach everywhere I go. When the primitive Baptists quit being forgiven, they'll quit being primitive Baptists. When they quit loving one another, they'll no longer be primitive Baptists. If you get ashamed to let a tear roll down your face because you're ashamed for someone to see it, I pray for you. If you're ashamed this evening to say, Lord, I love you because you died for me, I pray for you. If you can't understand how personal it is this evening, I pray for you. And if you do understand, I hope to God I still pray for you. May the Lord bless you. Before the throne of God above, I have a strong, a perfect plea, a great high priest whose name is love, whoever Visit the Primitive Baptist Digital Library for videos, articles, history, hymns, and encouragement. www.primitivebaptist.net